Sumedha ji will now uh, give you an overview of the conceptual framework of this conference. Thank you, sir. And thank you for that welcome address. I'm going to take very little of your time. I'm just going to very crisply put together just what we are going to try to do in these two days. So the topic of this conference is femininity in Hinduism the feminine in Hinduism. And as has been uh, mentioned, the whole idea of the name is to contrast it with feminism, which is a very popular term, which is very popular amongst men, women, the general populace of today, without really thinking about where the term has uh, come from and what we want to do with it. I would like to emphasize, however, that we have not completely given up on the term feminism because it is too well accepted for us to abandon it immediately. We are on the path to abandoning it or changing it, but we have not yet done that for the simple reason that we need a bridge. We need a bridge from where we are today in terms of the feminist paradigm and where we want to be. So when uh, Indica gave the short-term research fellow fellowships, we called it Indic feminism. So we want to put the word Indic in front of feminism to uh, make it different, to tell you that this is not what you think of as feminism, but this is something different. And hopefully we will migrate to something which is more in keeping with us, three Shakti, Shakti. We have so many words to use for the part, the place where women are in this society. But uh, we are, uh, you know, we have to retain the word for the moment, but our whole aim is to be able to abandon this. The thing about feminism, it started in 17th, 18th century Europe, in France, in England, which arose from specific civil and religious disabilities that women had. They were not seen as legal individuals, they could not own property, they were actually chattels or property of their husbands. Since they had no legal rights, they had no political rights, they were basically not social individuals at all, they had to fight a lot to get all these things. That was the first wave of the feminist movement, as all of us know. So that was suffrage, property rights, etc. And then we had the second wave, the third wave, we are now in the fourth wave. With each wave, feminism becomes more and more radical, more and more toxic, more and more anti-family, anti-man, anti-society, anti-religion, anti-everything. It just basically stands for some kind of very rebellious and angry lashing out at everything. So we must stop to think. We must stop to make also our young women think. Because I'm sure along with me all of you are very aware that if you talk to any young person, they have a lot of resentment and anger inside them, which is built up from what? From the narrative that we see around us. And it is that narrative that we must change. We have to change it and we are in a very good position to change it because we have knowledge systems, we have our own epistemology, ontology, we have Vedic, Shastrik, Upanishadic, all kinds of knowledge, all kinds of uh, ways of understanding, all kinds of ways of analysis which we can use. And what is the most important thing that we have? We have our lived experiences as Hindu individuals, as Hindu women, as Hindu men. And I think that of the biggest problem that I see with uh, Western academics, apart from the theoretical construct, is that they completely forget that Hinduism is a living religion. We are all practitioners. We live that life. We are not, uh, you know, uh, in a museum. We actually live that life and uh, we cannot be analyzed as kind of, you know, dead people under a microscope. And that part is completely missing as far as Western academics is concerned. So this conference is an academic conference, but we definitely hope that all the topics that are covered here are of general interest. They will be of general interest because the things that all of you are going to talk about are interesting, meaningful, rooted. It's just that you are going to present a different view from the normal Marxist feminist view, which is put forward in most of what we call Indian feminist discourse. 
what are we going to do what we want to do is reset the terms of academic engagement with hindu traditions especially as they relate to women so we are not necessarily going to reject everything we are going to critique it we are going to understand it we are perhaps we are going to use it so many of your papers may actually be using some theoretical constructs which you find useful and that is perfectly all right what we want to do is to bring in our own understanding and to bring in our own uh, traditions to take this narrative forward so this conference has people from india it has people from the us it has people who are going to talk on different types of femininity on folk traditions on oral traditions on also devi and shakti traditions so you will see a number of wonderful engaging papers and i must uh, mention that the last session today after tea is going to be the special session where the scholars of the indic feminism strf those short term research fellowships they are all going to present their papers so that will be a very special uh, session because this is a special effort of indica to give grants to people who actually want to do this kind of new work and uh, we hope to be able to carry this forward this is the first round of strf grants we hope to be able to carry this forward with these words i will uh, we will now move on and uh, i think uh, i have conveyed sir has welcomed you i have conveyed the concept of the conference and we are ready to go thank you